Happy Floss Tube Friday, everyone. My name is Carrie, and this is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to Floss Tube episode number 19. I hope you are having a great week. Welcome to my studio. I am here again on Friday to give you my little stitching update for the week of what I've been up to. If you are a new subscriber or a new viewer, thanks for so much for clicking and checking me out. My channel is mainly about cross stitch, quilting, a little DIY, lots of fun, lots of fabric, lots of colors. Uh, I hope you'll stick around and, and check me out. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back and welcome to the craziness. If you've been here before, you know that what you're in store for and I hope you're excited for it. So as always, I'm going to run through a little table of contents, tell you what we're in for today. Um, we've got my whips of the week and it is smack dab in the middle of March Madness. If you don't know what that is, stay tuned. I'll give you a little update of what that is. But what that means is I've got, I don't know, seven whips, eight whips, five whips. I don't know, but I've been stitching every day on something new. There's been polls that you've been voting on Instagram telling me what moves on. So much fun. Lots of whips to share on that. Um, and if you were here last Friday, you know that we had our 3K subscriber giveaway extravaganza. So that means I've got a a whole list of winners from last week's episode, so stay tuned for that. Um, I also have a featured Etsy shop this week. Uh, the Sweet Etsy Shop, who's a fabric dyer from Texas. Lots more to come, but that's coming in today. I want to give you a little shop update because the 15th is happening next week. So I want to give you a little teaser. If that's something you're in for, I'll do that at the end. Um, first, and then... We're going to dig right into it, but I wanted to say thank you first to both Linda S. and Pam R. They utilized the Buy Me a Coffee link that I have in the description box down below, and I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Using that link down below um, helps me to pay for some of the shipping. Like I've got, I don't know, 15 giveaways that hopefully are going to be shipping out here in the next week. So your donation to the channel is greatly appreciated. So we're going to dig right into the stitchy goodness first because it's floss tube. That's what you're here for, right? To get enabled, see the good stuff, all the things. So I wanted to just go over my March Madness Steel City Stitchers. If you don't know what this is, it's kind of like a twist on the bracket basketball system, the game. And, and I did eight new starts. Those are the, the titles in blue. I did my cute little... um names for it in red. I had the Battle of the Barbaras, the Julian Purples, me trying to read backwards and upside down, Farm Animal Frenzy, and the Clash of the Peas. Now, last time we were here, I don't remember where we were. So the good news is, is I think I've stitched them all since last week, or at least maybe, maybe not. I don't know. No. Okay. So let's see. First one, Patriotic ABC. I'm not going to show you that one. That one didn't win the battle. Um, so I showed you that one last week. So I'll move him to the side. He didn't get any stitching on. But the next one who did win, Dancer. So Dancer actually got stitched on on the 9th. Sorry, I should have had these all arranged, but I have them in my cute little Amazon. These bags are like the cat's pajamas. I will link them down below. You get like 30 for $10. It's perfect for these kinds of things. I mean, I'm a project bag maker, so don't get me wrong. I've got some project bags, but in this kind of like surge, I'm doing something new every night. That's normally not my MO. So, and these are all smalls. Um, I made sure that all my projects were around. A <laughs> hundred by a hundred, a little bit over, a little bit under, somewhere in the ballpark of a hundred by a hundred. I'm going to classify that as a small and something that I could get done in the month. So Dancer moved on. Dancer won the battle of the Barbara. So Barbara Anna did a little competition. So let me remind you um, what Dancer is. So Dancer is this sweet, sweet pattern that was in the Punch Needle and Primitives magazine just this past um, episode. Episode. Um, 
installment magazine for the December timeframe. Um, so I am stitching this using the called for esque inspired by I'm trying to pull the I tried to pull the called fours, but if I didn't have it, I'd switched a little bit. But I'm doing this on a custom dyed by Patrick um, fabric. If you're new here, I'm an Ada stitcher. Everything I stitch on is Ada. I love linen. Don't get me wrong. I just can't see it. So um, I am an Ada girl through and through, and I love it. So this is a dyed by Patrick. I think this was with red wine variety, but you can see. Um, that he is coming together just a little bit. And so this was, he's given stitched on two nights. So this one's actually in voting right now. So if you're watching this on Friday, you can go to my Instagram right now and vote which one is going to go on. So head to head right now today is Dancer and Hilda Boo. But so that is Dancer called for esque. We'll see right now. I think I checked earlier um this morning and dancer was squeaking by with the wind but right now so two of my three battles and yes there were four but i'll explain what happened to one of them um two out of my three battles have been decided by one vote and like uh, you know 150 versus 149 it's crazy like one vote anyway so every vote counts every vote counts and matters so if you're on instagram i would love for you to check out my stories you know what i'm talking about if not i've got a little instagram story tutorial there's plenty of fun there's still one two three three more things to vote on so come and join the fun on instagram all right so peppermint pals this only got stitched on one day, and I think I showed this to you last week because um, it might have lost by then, or maybe it was in voting. But let me just show you real quick since I've got them all handy. This is such a sweet little guy um, by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. This is again on a Patrick Dyed Ada. This is a grape juice variety. Um, look at the modeling, it is so yummy. Um, this Santa, Santa, hold on, I'll show you. This snowman is adorable. Now hold on. Well, the great thing about being in my studio is I can just pop off camera real quick and then come back and show you. So if you're if you haven't seen, if you're new to my channel, this is like the little snowman's friend. They are sisters and so, or brothers or best friends. I don't know, but this is my finish from Flossmas December of this year. I did Flossmas. So that was every day I was coming on and sharing with you guys a new Etsy designer. I had so much fun doing that. Definitely going to do it again this year. Um, but I finished this guy during Flossmas and he, I loved it. I love the finish. It was a painted by me, Hobby Lobby, chunky frame. I distressed it, painted it, sticky board mount, grabbed a little Christmas ornament from the Hobby Lobby, you know. And so this guy, I'm going to try to finish in the same way, not on green and pink or red. I'm not quite sure. I should have gotten two of these. I don't think I did. And of course, you need to see that orange sticker. Love me an orange clearance sticker, but um, we'll see. So that's Peppermint Pals. Let me put him all the way. So that is Peppermint Pals. So much fun. Again, I'm using called for esque the red that i ended up using was cayenne it from weeks dye works it actually just popped and then bayberry so that is the called for green but the red i needed just a deeper red to kind of contrast that purple that i'm stitching it on um i wanted it to pop a little bit more hold on no i'm already mixed up okay hold on last week if, if you saw i kind of just did it and made a mess it took me forever to try to clean up the mess. So I am going to take just a hot second to put them back in the bags. Otherwise, like I've got, I've, I've got sewing to do this afternoon, so I can't be cleaning it up and trying to put it all back together. Um, so that was Peppermint Pals. Peppermint Pals went up against Hilda Boo. Now, so Hilda, Hilda Boo won. And if I had the dates, it would have remembered. So this was first, second, third, fourth. So on the 5th, you guys voted for Hilda Boo. I don't remember if it was one of the one vote winners. Could have been. But 
So she got stitched on last night. So since she won, she got stitched on last night. Now I stitched, um, one particular area last night because I've talked to a couple of my friends. I've talked to Sarah and Michelle. Michelle from Penny's Daughter Shares is my inspiration behind Hilda Boo. She finished this in the fall sometime. You should go check it out. Her finish is gorgeous. So, um, she inspired me, enabled me, uh, made me add to cart. And so, but... I am doing this on a, not the called for a fabric. Um, it's a, um, grape juice, Patrick dyed fabric. Now in this light, right this second, let me put my glasses on. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Okay. But so my question, my conundrum, if this beauty goes on again, especially if it gets to like the final fun finish FFO, I'm struggling with the boo. Okay. So it actually is coming. Like I don't, I'm not hating it right this second on the screen in person. I got to put my glasses on to see the, you can see this purple, the O because it's got white next to it. Right. So that makes that purple pop. But can you see, I actually stitched part of the B. I just don't want the boo to get lost in the fabric. So my fear is that I chose a purple that was too close to the color of the fabric. Now, if you remember from last week, I had not one, not two, but three different silks to choose from. And these were all most silks. Um, one of them is actually one of the giveaways for today. And that's actually the one I went with. So this is what I showed you guys last week. And so this is a pretty good, yeah, the, I got sunny, sunny Virginia. It's going to snow tomorrow, but it's 60 today. I mean, who can pay? I can't even keep up. But so this is the three colors I had to choose from. This was plum. These are the, this is the same as this. Um, so I, this is the one I went with. It's actually got its own variegation already in it. Originally, before that one arrived, I was going to do my own kind of like um, blended threads, which is so fun. So because this is six, it was 14 count when it was dyed, um, but I have consistently felt that when I hand dye or when Patrick dyes or when I'm dying, chemistry dying in my kitchen, I get a good shrinkage. And so that means I'm shrinking down to at least a 16 count, sometimes even 17. Yeah, it's random, but it's just a little bit, it's tighter than a 14 count anyway. So, but it still needs two, two strands of floss is the moral of the story. So I was going to do my own little blended with these two, which is super fun because it's kind of a little purple variegation down at the bottom. But then this one arrived in my Moe's little giveaway package. And I thought that that was perfect. Perfect. Now it looks great in a big chunky piece like this. Like it is not blending in with the fabric at all. But I just struggle. So I was talking to Michelle and I was like, okay, so do I have to frog all of that? So instead of frogging on the second night of stitching, I went ahead and I did some black. I started the black. I did the green because I just wasn't ready to make the decision on the frog, whether the frog was going to come or not. So, um, what do you think? Like, I don't know if you want to vote. The, this is the other half of tonight's, today's vote is Dancer versus Hilda Boo. That is today, Friday. Welcome. Friday the 10th, 11th. My watch should tell me, but it doesn't. The 11th. Um, you get to vote today. So this is, I, I don't know. What should I do? I won't say that I don't want Hilda because then I don't have to make it. To, I don't know. Hashtag struggles real people. Struggles real. No, I'm just kidding. It's just fun. Um, but I don't know. I don't want to rip it out and then put in the other one and then realize I should have just left it. Maybe I should start, ooh, see, just talking it through with you guys. It's kind of like talking, calling up your best friend and be like, duh, 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 I need your help. And then you talk it through and then all she did was listen and you've solved your problem. I think that's kind of just what just happened here live with us is I think what I'm going to do, if this guy moves on or if this cutie moves on, I'm going to do my little blended thread that is option number two and just do some of the B over here. So don't frog, don't frog yet, but stitch, you know, five, 10 rows of the B over here and then see which one I like. Mm. 
I think that's, I think, I think we're on to it, folks. I think, like I said, hey, thanks for listening. Thanks for helping me. Anywho. Um, so that was our first two brackets. And then we come down to the farm animal frenzy. And this is where we have a little bit of a, you know, life happens. And even with the best of intentions, life happens. But let me show you, I did get that the first one is hen peck. So the farm animal frenzy is my two plum streets. I just love these. Listen, I don't have a farm. One day I might have a farm. I won't have a farm, but maybe I'll have a chicken. Um, or chickens. You can't just have one chicken. Um, so this is my farm animal frenzy. It was hen peck versus cow pile, right? Okay, great. So Saturday, Sunday, I don't remember the days, but I got some good stitching in on hen pack. Super cute. Okay, so this is coffee dyed by me. Uh, yep, I love the modeling. Okay, so this was just an Ada, a 14 count Ada that I had gotten. And then I did my like dunk it, cook it. Anyway, so when it dries, sometimes you get those funky lines and I think that it's just gonna give it's a pretty dense stitch so the lines aren't gonna stand out like in your face they're kind of you know it's gonna be stitched around it so I'm pretty excited about it but so that's hen peg so far okay so that was the that was the first one in the bracket of my farming a little frenzy yay and I'm using called force inspired if you in the realm okay so the next one was cow pow so this was supposed to be Sunday. So Sunday morning, I truly try to get, rather than get up and go, I gave you all my little like, what you do in the world of Carrie and Tyra Lily and things and my day job and all. So, but on Sunday, I slow. Can you imagine that I slow down? I do. I try to slow down and enjoy like the quiet hours. I grab my coffee and it's just a slow Sunday morning. So what I should have done Sunday morning instead of what I did, I should have gotten my hour in on my daily chart, but I didn't. I did something else and I'll show you that in a little bit. But what that meant was Sunday night came around and we actually had plans and we did something. So there was no stitching Sunday night. So I stitched every day, but in my mind, I was going to stitch the cow Sunday night. Didn't happen. So we're going to roll with it, people. We're rolling and it's exciting. Uh, we have a forfeit situation and it just happens. So hen pack one because cow, cow pile forfeited. They didn't even show up to the battle and it's okay. <laughs> but I just want, I mean, I, you know, things happen and you just got to zig and zag and it's all just in fun, right? So, so hen pack moved on by process of elimination and I'm okay with it. So hen pack is going up again. So she gets stitched on tonight, which is exciting because Lily's already got today's menu planned. So that means I'm actually going to get some extra stitching in because she's making the dinner tonight. Oh, oh Lordy. What's this? Oh, held a boo. Hold on. I got, I got loose patterns on the table. Okay. So hen pack is getting stitched on tonight and then it's going to go up against the winner of these two. Okay. So then I stitched on two more last week and then they battled and then one of them won. But let me just show, let me show you the, I'm not going to call it a loser because everyone's is a winner, right? Eventually, obviously I love the pattern. Um, and so it's going to get done eventually. It just isn't going to get done this month and I'm okay with that. Plenty of time. So this is the one that's not moving on that got stitched on on the March 7th, Penny Pumpkin. Again, my sweet friend Michelle enabled me on this one. And so I started at the bottom. I wanted to do a center start, but I had this gorgeous piece of picture this plus fabric. What's it called? It's 16 count Darling that I got from one, two, three. And it was just a beautiful piece and I hadn't cut it to measure. So I didn't want to do a center start because I wanted to maximize the, the fabric piece that was left. So to do that, I had to do a corner start, my little two inch, um, stitch gauge, but it's just my eyes estimating is the gauge I started with. So that's where I started. So I was trying to get to the urn 
but by the time the night came, the urn didn't make it, and this one didn't win. So this one battled up against George and Martha. Um, George and Martha is a super sweet pattern. I have a whole collection of Mount Vernon patterns, um, and I love them. That I haven't stitched any of them or haven't fully finished any of them. But obviously, I've started stitching this one. And so this one is the winner. So this one's going to get stitched on tomorrow night or tomorrow day. Maybe I'll start Saturday morning so I won't have that problem again. But this one's super sweet. Yeah, so sorry about the loose threads sometimes. And I'll tell you why I did this. So sometimes, like, I have to pull. I have to stop stitching, like, mid thread. It's, you know, if Lily and I were watching a TV show and the show is over, we're either starting a new show, which means another 45 to 60 minutes or like shows over time to go to bed. Like we have this whole routine. Um, and so sometimes if it's like time to go to bedtime, it's mid thread. Now you would think there would be a needle associated with this, but there is not because I have a shortage of needle situation going on right now. I have one of these cute, I should have brought it, but that cute little needle case from Fat Quarter Shop. I keep that right next to my stitching chair. It's got this magnetic case. Um, most of my bigger projects have their needle in the thing with their thread beds and there's, there's multiple needles. But when I was kidding up these eight projects all at once, I didn't have eight spare needles. Why? Because... I don't know. I didn't plan properly. And, and I usually, I bought the Pat Carson's and I haven't quite found the replacement needle that I love. Which one do you love? Like I was a Pat Carson junkie and I did not act fast enough, quick enough to, to stock up before they're gone. And so I've tried the tapestry, the peacekeepers, and that's what I've got in my thing right now is 26 and 28 peacekeepers. That's what I have in Mary. I'm kind of, it's okay. I like it. It's a little shorter. I haven't, I haven't figured it out. Moral of the story is I don't have enough needles that, for the projects I have. I need to solve that problem, but I need to find my new favorite. So that's probably why I haven't solved the problem. So that is why there's a loose thread because I just pull out my noodle, put it back in my case and put this back in the bag. Now, okay, that's great. That's one story. Why? That's why you have one, you know, Martha's dress. Did I show you the pattern? Super cute. Um, that's why Martha's dress is pattern is loosey goosey. But um, why is there a blue loosey goosey, you ask? Well, let's look closer. Okay, you see, George and Martha, right? Super sweet, Mount Vernon, beautiful white house and the roof. It's like used brick is the red. So it's a terracotta -y, orangey, red, gorgeous color, right? Okay, now the blue. You see, it's in the flag. We all know what color the flag is. It's blue. And then you've got his coat and some of the quilty stars that are flying around. Not flying. Placed around or organically. Okay, so the problem, not a problem. I just kitted it up with called for. Whether it was at my LNS or 123, I'm not quite sure exactly how it, it happened because I've had it kitted for a while. But, and this is showing up. The called for blue is bejeweled. That is not blue to me. That is, no, nope. Like I cannot make the American flag in this blue. This is not, this is, I'm trying to think of a good jewel. J, it's turquoise. It's a turquoise blue. It's a beautiful color. Don't get me wrong. Bejeweled is a lovely description, but it is a, tealy turquoisey bluey color and so that would have been great for his coat like i don't hate it but it's the same blue throughout i think it needs to be more blue blue like red white and blue blue patriotic anyway so that's why i mean it's really bright i wish you could see it's kind of wishes it kind of doesn't look too bad on the screen i mean i don't have my glasses but it's it's jewel it is not blue it does not scream red white and blue patriotic theme to me so i stitched that and i was like eh, no mm -mm. i'm gonna need to go to my thread wall or borrow from another floss if this guy moves on more and find yeah and find a different blue so that is why there are two random threads okay look at me all right, so it's not a crazy mess. 
Yay. So that is my bracket. That's what I've been stitching on this week. So lots of stuff. Um, I've got stitching. There's voting today. They'll be voting again on Monday, Sunday. I don't know. I can't keep track. Next time. Sometime Instagram stories. Vote if you want to. It's fine. Um, so the other thing, the one, she's here. Um, Sunday morning, you know, the story I was telling you before where I was like, I want to stitch on this. I want to, well, I wanted to stitch on Mary. I've been, I've been following the rules, self-enabled rules, self-inflicted rules, um, for the stitchy madness, um, the March madness. And that's great. And I felt very accomplished and did all the things, but my sweet Mary was calling to me. So I needed, so Sunday morning, that's what I spent a few hours doing is I, I just, I needed to get a little mini motif done. And so that, Oh, and let me tell you a little story. Okay. So if you don't know, if it's your first time here, Welcome, but Mary Morgan's was my birthday start, my birthday sal. I've got a sal. I will put the hashtag right here. We, pickles, I forgot my list again, but I do have a list and I am going to share, start sharing with, with you guys, but make sure you um, use the hashtag because I'm seeing you all and adding you to my list if you're using it. Um, so this is my Sal, Mary's Rose Sal. You should see that, see that along the bottom if my video editing skills are working. But let me show you what I did Sunday morning. Let me just show you the whole thing. Okay, so here she is. If you saw last week's, what do you see? It's new. Well, I got a little more. Hold on. I got a little more of that flower above the rose filled in. So it is almost complete. It might be complete. And then I went a little bit to the right and we started working on that row, that flower motifi. But then on Sunday morning, okay, so Saturday at some point, can you see what I did? Yeah. I did a cue and the first, and then I realized Sunday morning when I woke up that I was sick, that I was too many stitches over. I was anchoring off one loop over. Yeah. Okay. So the frog has to come there. Is, I can't wiggle around that one. So I was trying, starting to frog, but I didn't have the right, um, tools with me at the moment. I don't frog with a needle. I frog anyway. So, um, I stopped frogging cause I wanted to frog correctly. And so instead I decided, well, I'm, I still want to stitch on her. What am I going to do? So I went down and I did the sweet little flower pot, right there and then the little brown doggy i think yes so that's that is what i got updated she got a little bit of love this week um maybe this weekend i will give maybe do a little bit more frog correctly that's what i will do um and then maybe i'll move on over a little bit but so of course steady slow and steady Slow and steady on my Miss Mary's and I'm having so much fun with her and she's in my sweet little project keeper that I can't even close because it's a hot mess. Okay, hold on. All right, so that is my whips. Yay, lots of stitching, fun. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit. We're gonna dig right into it. Okay, so if you were here last week, so I've got the 3K winners. I've got a new featured um, Etsy shop to share with you with a giveaway and then a shop update. So that's what we've got still left. Um, so there you go. So what did I do this morning? So this morning I went and I made, I did the random comment YouTube generator and I've got all my winners for last week's giveaway. And so what I'm going to do is show you what the prizes were and then show you the winner. Now, if I say your name or you read your name, you won. Yay, congratulations. So what I need you to do is down below in the description box is my email address. So I need you to send me an email saying, hi, my name is Susie. I won um, the Tulip Pink bag and here's my shipping address. That's all you need to do. And I will get this stuff shipped out early next week. So. Without further ado, let's just go ahead and start. So the first thing we had, not in any order, it's just the order of the note cards. My Tiger Lily mom started making zipper pulls, super sweet. So we had two 
One has a sweet little butterfly. One has an animal print on it. So those are the zipper pulls. So the winner of the butterfly is Kathy Huff. Congratulations, Kathy. And the winner of the animal print zipper pull is Christy Martin. Congratulations, Christy. All right, so those are those two winners. And then I've got two super adorable Lizzie Kate patterns. Look how sweet those patterns are. If you are a teacher or you have a teacher in your family, these are super adorable. It comes with like a little apple button too. So the winner for the teacher charts is Debbie Reynolds. Congratulations, Debbie. All right, so moving right along. Now, if you guys remember, we've got, I've got some Moe's Silk to share with you and I'm so excited. So many winners. I was so happy that I did um, the little dis deconstruction of the Hanks. Now, I do want to show you just because it's fun because the Hanks are so reasonable from most silks and it's kind of like, should I get a mini skein at whatever it was or get a Hank? Well, if it's the color you even remotely use um, regularly, get the Hank. But I'll be honest, like I hadn't even done my own Hank ma management overall. I'm, I'm pointing at my floss wall like you can see it, but over there is my floss wall. And so I hadn't even done my own Hank management. But this morning when I was like, okay, time's, time's up. I got to get these Hanks divided into threes. Because if you remember, there was a gorgeous Hank of two different colors. And they were going to have two winners and one for me. So we were going to be three of us. So I had to take 100 yards and divide it into, you know, thirds. Okay, great. So what am I going to do? How am I going to give this to you guys in a way that's not going to be a jumbled mess hopefully. So what I did was this, and this is why just a little tip. Now I am going to do a separate video because I actually have, after I started doing this, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this with all my Hanks. And, and trust you me, I have a collection of Moe's Hanks and Mercedes Hanks and Silks for You Hanks. I like some Hanks, at least whites and blacks and red. Anyway, so I, once I discovered this method, I am here for it and I'm excited about switching it up rather than just having a, a Ziploc bag of my Hank. And then once you cut into it, it became a hot mess. So this way I can Hank management. I'm super excited about it. So I am going to try to, we'll see, do a little quick two, three minute video showing you guys separately how I do this. But while I'm here with you today and showing you the winners, what did I do? Okay. So Floss drops. I mean, so everybody knows what a floss drop is, right? You have your fancy floss. It's on a business card type size and there's all the drop and there's the swap and the drop and the whatever. Um, so I almost pulled on Tiger Lily business cards that I have for my business, but then I was like, you know, what if, and so as a mom of two teenagers, we have a board game collection, like out of this world board games. I mean, my kids are 17 and 19. We've been playing board games for 20 years. And, and a lot of them, they don't play anymore or we've lost some cards. So decks of cards, right? So everybody, you get a 52, you lose and you may, and now there's only 48. Now I used to throw them away. I actually probably still do throw the not 52 cards in a card deck throw away. But this morning, I went down into the collection, found a deck of cards. Moral of the story is I found a deck of cards that was missing one card. So it's basically useless, but not anymore. So if you remember, this was a hank of floss. This was a beautiful, it's an emerald city was the color that Moe's called it. And so what did I do? So this is, I divided it into threes. I took my Vegas card. I took my hole punch with a, I think it's a half inch. I will link it down below. It was the Amazon special. And, whoo, sorry, that was loud in your ears. Um, I went ahead and I punched two holes in it because I wanted to try to get 30, 33 yards per card. And so I thought it was going to be a little dense if it was just one hole. So there's about 15 yards per hole, which is perfect. 
And so I've got two half cards, a hole for my ring. And then I took my, a, like a white Avery label, shipping label that I use. Anyway, I have them. And so I wrote Mo's silks, Mo's sales, silk emerald. So decks of cards, a hole punch, the little, this is the standard hole punch and you pop it in your ring. Ah! So anyway, this is what we've got. So I've got two emerald winners. So this is again, remember Mo Silk. And if you don't know what Mo Silk is, you need to go back and watch last week's video. Great, beautiful hand dyed silk from a hand dyer in Florida. Gorgeous colors, changes every week, one of a kind. So this is the emerald silk. And the two winners are Sandra Moore and Melody Thomas. Congratulations. All right, so that is the emerald silk. And then I did this same little Hank management um, for the color called Christmas Night. Beautiful, variegated. I should have my white board, but it's already got floss on it. But it's a variegated blue, gorgeous color. Um, Sarah Wren and Shannon Epley, congratulations. You're winning the night Moe's silks. And let me put that over there. All right, we've got two more silk winners. All right. So if you remember from last week, so the mini gets, so she does Hanks, which is a hundred yards, but then we've also got these mini skeins, which 17.4 yards each one. And this was a beautiful color. It was all different. And went. it goes from a purpley blue to a turquoise blue, beautiful, variegated. She gave me four mini skeins as a donation. And I'm so excited. I've got two winners, Jamie Clonch and Chris Hindle. Congratulations. Each of you has won two of those mini skeins. And then last but not least is the purple. So this is the gorgeous color that she called plum. Again, all silk, all gorgeous. And this is six stranded silk. So with my 14 and 16 count Ada, I am using two strands and it gives beautiful coverage. Um, it's a little thicker than, anyway, beautiful coverage. Um, this is the plum color. It's a nice variegated, slightly variegated, not over the top, shades of purple. And the winner of this one is gonna be Linda Sargent. Congratulations. Okay, so if you're a winner, again, let me know down below. Oh, one more prize. I've got, I've got one more card here. And if you remember, this was the Tiger Lily Designs Tula tote bag. So it's a sweet little tote bag. It's the perfect to hold those projects or just, anyway, it's a sweet little um, bag, ruffle bag I used to make in my day of doing artisan markets. And I've retired this product now. And so this one's winner is gonna be Jeff Colvin, congratulations. So if you were a one of my, I don't even know how many winners, 12, 15 winners, email me and I will get your stuff packaged up and out to you, lickety split. And thank you so much for 3K subscribers. It just blows my mind. I'm having so much fun and I'm already getting set up and excited about the next one. It's just fun to give away. But so speaking of giveaways, like I said, we've got a giveaway today, which is so awesome. Um, a sweet Etsy shop. Like I told you guys in Flossmas, I featured an Etsy designer every day for 24 days, maybe. There was a independent Etsy designer, a designer that only sells her patterns on PDF via Etsy. I loved it. It was a quick way for us to be able to support small. I am a big support small advocate. And so this is right in my wheelhouse. And I loved it. And the PDFs you downloaded and started stitching that day. So that was Flossmas. And so this year I'm going to do something like it, but I'm also, I'm going to expand it. It's not just going to be designers. The designers are great because they're PDFs and you get them like right then. But if you plan a little bit in advance, we can also support the other people that create such beautiful things for our um, 
craft and our art. And so one of those shops is called Wicked Whimsy Crafting. And let me just, I'm gonna, there is her business card. And you're gonna put Wicked Whimsy Crafting with the ING. Surprisingly, there's a few different Wicked Whimsy shops on Etsy. Can you imagine? But look at that sweet little logo. So she is a Etsy shop and her name is Nicole and she lives in Texas. And so she has been stitching since 18 or so, 2018. So not that long. Um, but she like jumped in feet first into the craft and is loving it. And so in April of 21, she got the dye bug. And so her and her friends, she was kind of helping her friend find a color that they couldn't find. And so from there, like the rest is history. So if you go to her shop on Etsy, which I will link down below, she's got a great assortment, like basically every color in the rainbow. Ada, if you're an Ada citrus, this is an Ada dye shop, but her Ada from every, like I said, every color in the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, rainbow colors. And so what she has given us today is she's given us four different yummy fabrics. I'm going to share them all with you. And so her Adas, like I said, are all 14 count Adas, but it looks like I said, yep. So when I dye, it shrinks a little bit. And so I would venture to say that, that hers shrink, shrunk a little bit too. Well, let me just hold that there for you. So she does not only writ dye, and you'll see, so she does the writ dye, which just gives you the nice kind of solid little bit of modeling, but not over the top. But then she also does ice dyeing, which gives you this tie dye almost like, I mean, isn't that gorgeous? So all of the fabrics in her shop that she carries like ready to go are measured 10 inches by 17. So they're great for these smalls, little small mediums. You know, if you twist them sideways, maybe what, like, this just screams Halloween to me, but um, beautiful fabrics. So that one, we've got that one. And I'm gonna show you all, all of them, and then we'll go back and I'll tell you the color. So this is a beautiful, like this is a writ dye, and you can tell, cause it's more just a solid -y color. And this is another one that I'm gonna guess is writ dye, but she does, so when you dye, depending on how crumpled you make the fabric when it's drying, or when it's sitting in the dye, depends on how modeled it is. Also, depending on whether, it's pre-wet or not pre-wet, how it absorbs the, the dye. Isn't that fun? So some gorgeous fabrics that she is sharing with us. Okay, so we've got these four fabrics and what we're gonna do, hold on. <laughs> All right, so she has donated these and these are gonna be the giveaways for today. I can't wait for you guys to try these out, but. Like I said, no, there's not just blues and yellows and purples. It's all the different colors. So maybe you've got all oh, so many sweet colors she's got for like an Easter stitching if you've got going on. Um, you know, those are the times when you can put it on like an like an orangey sickle and a purpley and whatever. You know, they can, it can handle those fun colors. It doesn't just have to be sampler brown. Don't get me wrong. I love me some sampler brown, but I also love some color. So we've got these four fabrics are today's giveaway. And so how do you enter in today's giveaway? You're going to use this word in the sentence. Um... Don't say the word giveaway, make sure you're 18 so I can ask for your all, all the regular rules. So if you want the yellow, we're gonna use the word sunshine. If you want this one, we're gonna use the word Halloween because I think that's perfect Halloween stitch color. If you want this blue one, I don't have an original thought on this one. We're just gonna go blue. And this one, I would say turquoise, but like, I don't even know how to spell turquoise without spell check. So we're going to say crazy. Mm -hmm. Not because it's crazy, but it is, it is pretty awesome. It's crazy cool. I mean, mm, that is so fun. So we've got crazy blue Halloween and sunshine. 
Come back. <laughs> Those are the four words that you need to use if you want to win one of these cuts of Ada, generously donated by Nicole. Again, from Wicked Whimsy Crafting on Etsy. Go check her out. Show her shop some love. She was super sweet to donate and send that along for us and for me to share with you. Okay. Woo. Okay. So, Giveaway, giveaway, all the things. Last but not least is a little Tiger Lily shop update. Um, so if you're not here for a shop update and that's not your jam, no problem. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I hope you enjoyed a little stitching and enabling. Um, I love coming to see you guys and I will see you next week. But if you do want to see what's coming in the shop because it's the Plus two before the 15th, I've got a treat for you. Now, if you were here last week, you saw or you heard me ask you, what should I do? Now, what does that mean? Well, remember, a little review. Let's do a little two minute recap. So on the 15th of every month, I release a project bag, project keeper, pro project collection. A capsule collection is released on the 15th of every month. Sometimes it only has 10 bags. Sometimes it has 20. It all just depends actually on my workload and the other aspects of my business. So, but on the 15th, without fail, there will be something in the shop to see. So, um, this week, this month, I've got an extra special treat for you guys. Now I showed you last week, a little teaser of what was almost ready to go. And now they are. And so we will have a small collection of the project keepers that go with the Mary Rose towel. It doesn't have to go with the Mary Rose towel, but that was the inspiration beside behind the, the pattern selection on this because that giant rose just spoke to me like the fox and rabbit design. Now you saw these are my project keepers and you saw there's two different pattern, two different styles. There's the kind if you bobbinate your DMC, you get 24 slots to slide your bobbinated DMC, shove your pattern in this vinyl protected pocket and then you can shove your pattern in any eight and a half eleven sheet behind it so that is that style so i've got the pink roses as well as the double zig poppic variety which has two vinyl front pockets and two pockets behind so i've got some of those coming in the collection now so that's on the 15th at 1 p.m. Eastern. That's when everything goes live on my website. I wish I had enough for all of you guys. I wish it wasn't like Black Friday, Christmas toy shopping, but it is what it is. So set your alarm. If that's something that speaks with you, I don't want you to miss out because I'm not bringing back the, the roses are gone. When they're gone, they're gone. I've moved on to something else and uh, Anyway, so that, this is the last time you'll see the roses. Um, but last week I asked you guys, okay, so if I was going to dig into my vintage stitching, if you know what that means, that means I collect, I kind of like save the stitches class slash vintage stitching table linens that I give a new life to, would you rather see them in Project Keepers or Project Bags? <laughs> You guys are adorable, first of all. Thank you so much for saying your comments and letting me know. I won't say you weren't helpful because you were helpful in that you basically told me both. So there was no choosing. The only thing I did have to choose is which of my vintage table linens was I going to um, break into. So here I will put a clip. Um, I did a little quick, I don't know if it was a video or a picture of like, the before of this beautiful table linen that I had procured with this gorgeous rose buds all along the top and the sides. There were some stains that I had to, because it was a table linen, so people used it, you know, ate Easter dinner on this tablecloth. So I did have to work around it, but there were a lot of rose buds. So what does that mean? We got some fun for you. So, like I said, you guys were helpful, kinda. So I've got, Project Keepers, look at them. So this is the vintage stitching. So this, this was on the table linen. It lived its first life as a table linen. You know, ah, oh, I just love it. I love it so much. Um, So I've got Project Keepers. 
I've got six of these. Now, some are the double zip and some have the bobbin, but they all have the exact same cut of the vintage stitching and they all have the same kind of florally motif outer cover. So those are the project keepers. And then since you guys said both, then I had to make project bags too, cause you know, I, I, could, I couldn't decide. So then we've also got project bags. So again, the rose buds, um, I kind of finagled this to get a little sideways vine on it. So this is a bright, hot, pinky, beautiful, kind of coordinated great with that rose. And so these are just the traditional bags that I do. They're on double batting, quilted. They have the binding at the top. This is my traditional 11 by 13 size. This one gotta be a little bigger. Maybe it's a 12 by 13. Um, look at the little birds on it, so cute. Um, so this was kind of a little more patchworky. So I've got three and three, I think. Three and three of these, and then there's six of the Project Keepers. And that's my update. So those 12 plus 15 or so of the roses, that's what's coming on the 15th. I am done. I am now in the process of wrapping them all up in the tissue and so that they're ready to ship out that day when you guys press buy. So that is my update. That's Tiger Lily for me today. Thank you so much for coming and joining me and, and leaving your sweet comments and all the things. Hope to see you on Instagram. And if not, I'll see you next Friday. Happy stitching, friends.